Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So the summer transfer window shuts in about a month and so far Manchester United have made one signing. Now I am going to go through with you what Manchester United have to do to succeed in this summer transfer window and that is to sign a centre half. Uh, because obviously, you know, we need someone to go alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. By the way, we have got around seven centre-halves in the team. Now, obviously, we have been interested in Daya Upiamicano from RP Lesbig. But recent reports did say that Man United are looking to sign him in the summer of 2021. Uh, that's when he will be cheaper. Uh, because recently he extended his contract with RP Lesbig until 2023 and it includes a £38 million release clause. This can be triggered next summer. If we was to get Upiamicano in this summer transfer window, it cost us around £58 million. RP Lesbig did recently say that he is not for sale. He did confirm, was it last week, that he'd been in negotiations with interested clubs but he broke silent on the transfer to Man United. Uh, Christian Fark had spoken about the Dia Upiamicano transfer saga and he said the rumours linking him with a move to Manchester United are not true. Also to Arsenal have been long admirers of the player. I thought he was absolutely exceptional in RP Lesbig's win against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. I think RP Lesbig last season progressed to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Daya Upiamicano has been at RP Lesbig for around three years. RP Lesbig did pay around €10 million Euros for him from Red Bull Salzburg back in 2017. And he is only the age of 21, is the player. But I think he'd go well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. Um, also to Kaladu Kulabali, you know, he's been another centre half on our agenda as well. Uh, but I'm very, very sceptical that Manchester United will sign him. Now I think another another one of the things we have got to do is sign Sergio Reguilon from Real Madrid. Now obviously Fabrizio Romano has said that Real Madrid have offered Sergio Reguilon to Manchester United. And he's also said that Man United will decide on Sergio Reguilon very, very soon. Now, Sergio Reguilon is a left-back. Uh, we've got two predominant left-backs at the moment, and that's obviously Luke Shaw, who was obviously our first-choice left-back. My only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he is injury-prone, but prior to that, very, very good left-back. We've obviously now got Brandon Williams. He's our backup left-back. And we've also got Diego Delo and... Timothy Fossamensa that can also be deployed as a left back. So it would be beneficial if we could get a left back in. It recently said that Sergio Reguilon has been offered to clubs and it recently said that we'd put around a £27 million bid in for the player. But I think Sergio Reguilon has put Manchester United fans into meltdown because he... Um, Recently removed Real Madrid and I think he's following some of our players on social media and I think there's a lot of Manchester United fans on Instagram believe that Sergio Reguilon's coming to the club because he's likely to leave Real Madrid because obviously he can't even get in Real Madrid's team because obviously Zinedine Zidane prefers Ferland Mendy and Marcelo ahead of Sergio Reguilon. Sergio Reguilon is only the age of 23 so still very very young he has been at Real Madrid for several years. Um, obviously, last season he was out on loan with Sevilla, made 38 appearances in all competitions. Also, had a couple of loan spells with the Logrones. And he's got a contract with Real Madrid until 2023. But I think he's interested in coming to Manchester United. So, yeah. So, like I said to you on my video this morning, Sergio Reguilon could be our second signing in this summer transfer window. Definitely a cheap solution. 
But it does mention that um, Arsenal have been interested. Uh, Tottenham have also been interested. But we shall see. I think another one of the things Manchester United have got to do, and that is sign Jadon Sancho. Now, this transfer saga regarding Jadon Sancho has been going on for a long time now. Like I said, Jadon Sancho is our number one priority target, and I think we've been in for him for like the last three years. Now, don't forget, Sancho did recently say that he has got no issue with the transfer speculation linking him with a move to Manchester United. Obviously, we're trying to finalise the fees and the salary of Jadon Sancho's agent before putting a bid in for the player. Uh, throughout the course of this Jadon Sancho transfer saga, it has been Borussia Dortmund's asking price that has been the stumbling block. Uh, Borussia Dortmund's valuation is around £108 million. Dortmund have been looking for like £90 million up front. But I think it said we're only willing to pay 60 or £70 million up front. And I think also, too, the wage demands recently have proven to be have proven to be a stumbling block. Now, Sancho did recently make an admission uh, saying that the £108 million price tag that Dortmund are demanding, he is humbled by it. But he said he's staying patient uh, throughout the course of his career. Now, a few weeks ago, Sancho to Manchester United looked dead in the water because you obviously had Borussia Dortmund CEO, sporting director and another one of their directors saying that Sancho is staying at Borussia Dortmund and the decision is final. And don't forget Dortmund said to us that we had until the 10th of August to sign Sancho and obviously we missed out on the deadline to sign him so Sancho decided to go out on pre-season. But around four weeks ago now, it was looking very, very imminent that Sancho was going to be signing for Man United because you had Fabrizio Romano, he came out and said that Sancho agreed personal terms with Man United and it said he had agreed a five-year contract with a football club. But obviously, you know, couldn't come to an agreement on a fee. Christian Fark, he's spoken about the Sancho transfer saga a few times. James Cooper spoken about it quite a few weeks ago and James Cooper is also very, very close to Man United and he says that Man United don't miss out on players that they intend on signing. Sancho has endured three good years with Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund only paid £8 million in for Man City. Um, I think he's got a contract with Dortmund until 2022. If Sancho is sold in this summer transfer window, um, it'll be good from a Manchester City perspective because they'll get around 15% of the transfer fee. He end, he, the reason he had to leave Manchester City in the few years he was there is because he didn't get assured any first-team opportunities. Uh, we've already made a promise to Sancho that he will be our next number seven if he does sign for the football club in this summer transfer window. Obviously, you know, we've got number seven vacant at the moment, but we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. We have been looking at a lot of alternatives, though, to Sancho in recent weeks because he is much cheaper solutions than him. But Solskjaer is angry regarding the Jaden Sancho deal and he's urged Ed Woodward to go and sign him and fix it. That's what he wants to see. But I've outlined the reasons why I want Sancho at the club is because he's got um, a very, very good friendship with Rashford. He'll dramatically improve us. He's still very, very young and he has got good physical attributes. These are the reasons why I want him at the football club. You know, and I think we've missed out on two players so far under Solskjaer and that was obviously not Erling Haaland and Jude Bellingham and of course they both went to Borussia Dortmund. He said a few weeks ago that we'd abandoned, we had, we had abandoned our chase of Jadon Sancho until the summer of 2021 and he says we'll only give up on the player if he publicly says that he wants to remain at Dortmund. So yeah, I think another one of the things Manchester United have got to do and that that's sell players in this summer transfer window because quite frankly he is still deadwood at the football club I think we definitely need to sell Jesse Lingard we also need to sell Andres Pereira we also need to sell Smalling Rojo 
and Phil Jones. We also need to sell Diego Delo. Don't forget, you know, Sergio Romero is open to leaving the football club. So I think these are the things that Manchester United have got to do. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to give you some breaking news on Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood. So, Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood have been withdrawn from the England squad. Main explanations is because they have they've um, been caught bringing girls back to the team hotel and have also broken COVID-19 guidelines. So they're not obviously not going to be involved in England's game against Denmark. Uh, and I think actually the FA are investigating this. Now, Mason Greenwood recently got given the number 11 shirt at Manchester United. Um, obviously, this season, he's going to become the fourth player to wear the number 11 shirt. Uh, because, obviously, our recent number 11 was Anthony Martial. Obviously, Anthony Martial is now number nine. Uh, we also had Adnan Yanazai as number 11 at one point. And we also had Ryan Giggs as number 11. I think Ryan Giggs enjoyed like 25 years at the football club. Obviously, last season, Mason Greenwood was number 26. But last season was his first full season in the senior squad. Mason Greenwood uh, didn't play a lot. Uh, he didn't make a lot of starts last season, did he? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of his appearances last season came from the bench. But towards the end of the season, you know, he was getting a lot of starts. And he was getting there ahead of Daniel James. You know, don't forget Mason Greenwood has got a contract on Man United until 2023. So that is the news on that. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has revealed that he is frustrated with Ed Woodward over the lack of transfer activity in this summer transfer window. And I said to you, didn't I, you know, Man United are beginning to lose a hell of a lot of patience with the board because obviously our recruitment policy has been poor for several years and we've also overpaid for players in recent years. Obviously, you know, Woodward's been at Manchester United since 2012, so he's been here around eight years. And the Glazers have been at Manchester United since 2005, so they've been with us around 15 years. And I said, you know, they are the ones that are destroying the football club. Because, um, personally speaking, Solskjaer deserves better, deserves to be backed more. And I don't think he's getting backed enough. Um, Ed Woodward did say quite a few times that, you know, he's determined to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, he did say at the first part of last last season that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is safe, even though he was under serious pressure at the football club. And the Glazers have said, you know, they're determined to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But Solskjaer's totally blameless in all of this. Really, really is. Because, like I've said to you, I think Solskjaer is progressing as Manchester United manager. He really, really is. And he's even publicly come out and admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window if we are to compete with the likes of City, Liverpool and now perhaps Chelsea. But yeah, so far at the football club, Solskjaer has spent just over £200 million. Um, obviously, he's made five permanent signings. Uh, last summer brought Daniel James, Anne wan -Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. In January, brought Bruno Fernandes in. Obviously, brought Odi Nogalo in on loan. Obviously, Odi Nogalo was our top goal scorer in the FA Cup last season. And just after lockdown, we extended his loan until January 2021. Whether we're going to get Odi Nogalo permanently or not, I, permanently or not, I do not know. And we recently signed Donny Van der Beek from Ajax. And also, Solskjaer's brought a few brought a few academy players into the football club, so it's good. That, you know, he's been in more young players in and there's a lot of good young players coming through at Manchester United, you know. But um, I did say, didn't I, it's very imperative that we get all the players that we want in because this season we want to be challenging, challenging for the Premier League title. 
And I did say one of our expectations this season will be to challenge for the Premier League title because, you know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013 and we haven't mounted any title challenge up in the last seven years. So that just indicates how inconsistent we have been because in the last seven years, we've obviously had different managers with different philosophies. Obviously, you know, we've sat three managers since the Ferguson era and that was obviously David Moyes. He got sat after, what, eight and nine months Louis van Gaal, he got sacked after two years, despite winning the FA Cup. And Jose Mourinho, he got sacked after two and a half years, despite winning the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season at the club. So we've only won three trophies in the last seven years. But in the entirety of our history, we have won 45 trophies. But obviously 38 of them trophies came under Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, Ferguson endured 20-odd years at Manchester United, you know, and I just think it's going to be hard for any manager at Man United to definitely replicate Ferguson's legacy or to last as long as Ferguson did. But Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. You know? And also, in the um, last seven years, we have spent nearly £1 billion on players. That's including what we've spent so far under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Um, obviously, under Mourinho, we brought 11 players into the club. Um, the vast majority of his team is actually Jose Mourinho's, you know, and Solskjaer's inheriting them. Uh, Van Gaal brought around 16 players in. You know, he spent just over £200 million at the club, but the vast majority of the players Van Gaal brought in have now left. And obviously, Moyes, he spent around £67 million at the football club and he brought two players in. And like I said, there's still a few players here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. You know. But like I said, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Um, but another one of our expectations this season will be to challenge, uh, will be to win a major honour. Because we've not yet won out in terms of Suvwe under the Solskjaer era and we haven't won a major honour for over three years. And that's the first time this has happened in 30 years. And I also want to see improvements this season at Manchester United. I think, you know, there's still certain players that have got to improve. I think Harry Maguire's got to improve, definitely. Obviously, you know, this season's going to be Harry Maguire's second season at the football club. Obviously, last season was his first season at the club. We got Harry Maguire in a deal worth £80 million from Leicester last summer. So he's the second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. He was recently given an extra time off because uh, of obviously his court case in Greece and his arrest in Greece. He's going to remain Manchester United captain this season, so Solskjaer's already made his decision on Maguire. I think definitely Lindelof's got to improve. Um, if he was to get a centre-half in, then Lindelof would be used as backup. Lindelof will remain at Manchester United at least for another season. You know, Lindelof has endured three years at the football club. You know, we got Lindelof from Benfica for around £30 million back in 2017. He's definitely not on Harry Maguire's level. I think Eric Bay has also got to improve his fitness. He's a good, very good centre-half, but he's just far too injury-prone. Bay's endured around four years with Manchester United. We paid £30 million him from Villarreal back in 2016. Uh, Shaw's um, got to improve his fitness because he's too injury prone. But I just like I said, I still think he's a very, very good left back. Alman Basaka was exceptional last season, his first season with the club. Obviously, we've got Alman Basaka in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace last summer. And I think he can be our right back for the next 10 years, definitely. But I just think. We need to see more attacking intent from Anwan Bissaka. That's what he's lacking at the lacking at the moment. But his defensive contribution always been very, very good. Uh, De Gea, he's obviously you now get got to get back to his best because in the last couple of years he has been a liability, reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he has made. You know, like I've already said to you, Solskjaer has got a goalkeeping decision to make. Um, because he did say during our Europa League campaign that he's facing a goalkeeping dilemma. Like I've said to you, I think Dean Henderson should be our number one this season. 
because I think now Dean Henderson is reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper. You know, Dean Henderson has now got that experience behind him. He recently endured two successful loans with Sheffield United and he was Sheffield United's player of the season. Dean Henderson's been part of the club for several years because we got Dean Henderson at the age of 14. You know, we got him from Carlisle, didn't we? Don't forget. But Solskjaer did recently say he's not ready to become number one and he wants to stick with David De Gea for at least another season. Uh, recently, Dean Henderson had signed a five-year contract with Man United with an option of a further year. So in total, it was a six-year deal worth 120 grand a week. I probably still believe that there's aspects of Marcus Rashford's game that's got to improve. Uh, Rashford's definitely the foreseeable future for Man United. You know, he's been part of the club for several years. You know, Rashford's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Since then, has become an integral part of our team. Uh, Rashford's obviously got an ankle injury, so he's not. I don't think he's going to be playing in England in England's game against Denmark. Obviously, missed England's game against Iceland. Uh, don't forget, last season he had that back injury for us. Uh, Rashford's obviously now playing on that left hand side, but he can also, you know, play centrally, can't he? You know. So there's still definitely players at Man United that have got to really, really improve. You know, I think there's definitely aspects of our game that I've got to improve. I think also, too, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's decision-making has got to improve because in a lot of games last season, he was very tactically naive. But there were some games, to be honest with you, where he showed a lot of tactical flexibility in that. You know, but don't get me wrong. Um, I have seen improvements since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got recommended into the club. You know, I think definitely Rashford has improved under him. I think definitely Martial's improved. Martial was exceptional last season. Um, Anthony Martial has endured five years with Manchester United. And I think he's had two good seasons out of the five years he's been with us. Uh, last season he did well under Solskjaer. And he was exceptional in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. We paid around £36 million for Martial from Monaco back in 2015. Um, did obviously score on his debut in the 3-1 win against Liverpool. So we got him at the age of 19. I think Martial is now 24. Uh, Greenwood, he's also really improved under him. Brandon Williams, he's, he's improved under him. Um, I think Fred, um, he's also really, really improved under Solskjaer. There's obviously been rumours of Fred leaving the football club because since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes, he's found game time difficult and he's going to find game time even more difficult now that Donny van der Beek has come into the club. Um, last time I read about Fred, it says Galatasaray inquired about getting him on loan. Also, too, Roma were interested in getting him in. Fred has been at the football club a few years now. Um, obviously, paid £52 million to him from Shakhtar Donetsk. Fred did receive a lot of criticism under the Jose Mourinho era, but obviously, let's be honest, he never got his chances under the Jose Mourinho era. I think Fred's made around 73 appearances for Man United in all competitions, something like that, and scored around three goals. He has got a contract with us till 2023. Um, at Tom Inway, he's also really improved under Solskjaer. Um, at Tom has been part of the club for several years. Um, don't forget, he was out with that ankle injury last season. Matic, I think he's really improved as well. I think uh, we need to give him at least another season, the Manu Matic. You know, Matic has endured three years at the football club. We got him from Chelsea back in 2017 for around £40 million. Well, it was a deal worth £40 million, wasn't it? Um, I think also, too, uh, Pogba did very, very well towards the end of last season. I thought his combination with Bruno Fernandes was absolutely exceptional. I thought he did well I thought he did well in some of our Europa League games, did Paul Pogba. Now, obviously, there's still a possibility chance that Paul Pogba could leave the football club in January 2021. Because it recently said that Pogba is refusing to sign a new contract with Man United and he's waiting for Juventus to make an offer. Uh, don't forget Juventus is his former club. Pogba did endure four exceptional years with Juventus. He really, really did. 
But a couple of weeks before the end of last season, he said that Pogba was close to signing a five-year contract with Man United. And Fabrizio Romano had revealed that Pogba's happy to stay at the club. And Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, came out a few weeks ago and he said that Paul Pogba wants... He said that Paul Pogba will stay at Man United and he will hold talks over a new contract. As it stands at the moment, Pogba's just got under a year left on his Man United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for the further year. As it stands at the moment, Pogba's our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. Don't forget the other week he got tested positive for coronavirus. Did Paul Pogba. Um, so yeah, players have definitely improved. Um, I've seen other improvements. I think last season Solskjaer promoted the youth very, very well. I've got to say our recruitment's really, really improved under Solskjaer. And Solskjaer's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in to Manchester United. So that's also a very, very good thing. Uh, last season was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first full season at the football club. And to be honest with you, I think he exceeded most of his expectations. Obviously got us to three semi-finals got us qualification for the Champions League and I did say how important Champions League was for our players, attracting players and for the financial structure and we also finished third. The only disappointing thing is is the only disappointing thing is that you know we didn't win any trophies last season. I don't know if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the right manager for Man United and I don't know if he's the foreseeable future. I think this season is going to tell the story. And it's very, very imperative that we do have a strong start to this season. It really, really is. We should win our first two games because obviously you now we've got Crystal Palace and we've got Brighton. Two games we should win, but within our first seven games, we have got Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham and Everton. And they're all going to be very, very tough games. They really, really are. And it's not, not, it's not long now till the season starts. I am really, really looking forward to it. But for the Crystal Palace game, we should have a fully fit squad, you know. And I think a lot this season, Solskjaer's going to go with that 4-2-3-1 formation. He went a lot with that formation, didn't he, last season. And I think in the game against Palace, he will go with his strongest eleven. You know, but it is a transition period for Man United and it has been a transition period for a while. If things were to go well this season, we could possibly extend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's contract. I think as it stands at the moment, he's just got under two years left on his contract with Man United. But don't forget, Man United is the third club in his managerial career. We are unbeaten in the league since January. You know, we are unbeaten in our last 14 league games. Um... Last time we lost was to Burnley at Old Trafford back in January. And that was the first time Burnley had beaten us at Old Trafford in like 58 years. But since then, we have really, really improved. We also went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions until Chelsea had beaten us in the FA Cup semi-final. But I really hope things do work out under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. You know... So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.